Okay, so today we're gonna make a comic. Usually I start out by, uh, I have these templates I made. So this is the template for the four panel comic and I've made templates for one panel comic, three panel comics, six panel comics, 12 panel comics, and a million billion panel comics. I personally like these kind of like organic, not rulered out lines. I don't know, even though it's just duplicated four times in this image, it just makes things a little more homey and natural. And if I do use panel borders, which a lot of times I don't, I think it just feels nicer to have a unleavened line, as they say in the business. So anyway, I take one of these templates and depending on how many panels are going to be in the comic, pick the one accordingly. This one is four. Here is the thumbnail sketch. Unfortunately, I didn't film myself drawing this, but I do this for every comic. And a lot of times I'll take, if I have a bunch of different ideas for one specific comic, I'll take the file and I'll just, on different layers, I'll put different comic ideas. So right here, this comic strip is called After the Big One. And these are the, I think I came up with about four ideas to begin with. And uh, usually once I'm sketching out one, another idea will pop into my head. So instead of being like, oh, I'll remember this later, I'll just draw it out really lightly and really messily. So I have it there for later when I finally get around to drawing it. So what I do is I take the sketch and lighten it up a bit, and then I get to redrawing it. So I just kind of make a new layer. And uh, even though this first pass is really sketchy, uh, the second pass will be a little less sketchy, basically. So I'm just trying to focus in on things and get the composition of each panel down and make things look nice enough that the next pass can be ink. Yeah, so you'll see he didn't have a body and then I decided, oh, this kid, this is supposed to take place in a world where uh, these kids are just kind of, they're like feral children, you know, with no real supervision. And uh, so this kid's just running around in his underwear with shoes and socks on and he's got a little doll there. He's cutting off the heads of dolls. Uh, and this other kid, little hillbilly tomboy, shows up and tells him about this neat thing she found in the woods, in the burnt forest. He has to go check it out in his car, and a lot of times what I'll do is, in the next stage, I'll realize I need more room to show something. So you'll see me shrinking this car several times, you know, and deciding. You know, you, you can see me kind of thinking here, like, okay, I'll add in some buildings, I'll shrink the car down. So the last two panels are them inside the car playing spaceman uh, where they're pretending it's a rocket ship and this is actually something we used to find cars out in the woods that were all rusting down if we're lucky enough for them not to have like a beehive inside of them or a living feral animal we'd go inside and play spaceship in them or whatever so this is this idea is kind of based on that you know just kind of like fun things we did in the woods when we found a car in the middle of the woods and wonder how it got there yeah so here I am playing a little more, giving things a little more room, and it looks like I'm ready to ink. So this layer, I'm still using kind of a rough line. Since I'm doing this all on the computer, I like the line to have a little bit of texture to it so it doesn't feel quite as dead. That's kind of something you have to fight against in the computer. There's a lot of times you just look, use a normal line and it'll just look kind of very dry very mechanical just because it's made on a mechanical thing it lacks the like warbliness of uh, you know the human hand even though I'm using a satik tank this yeah so here I am inking and yeah, just kind of keeping things simple these are the characters I'll ink on another layer and a lot of times I'll ink the characters or whatever the foreground elements are on a layer by itself so that way when I'm coloring it's really easy to like you know you really want the foreground elements to stick out it's really easy to alter the color or change the foreground elements or even change the background elements because you don't have to worry about messing up the foreground elements you know and then when I'm working on the background elements I'll fill them in behind the characters 
so that when I'm coloring it's really easy to select an area because it's closed off. And you can use the magic wand tool to kind of select a closed off area really easily. Uh, makes coloring a lot simpler. Here I am, I'm doing another pass on this panel, adding in the characters. Yeah, as you can see, you know, you just keep moving things around. This is one of the great things about Photoshop is you can just keep moving things around and lightening areas and erasing areas and reconstructing characters. And you can do this again and again until you really figure out the people. And here I am saying, oh, this car should be even more in the distance, you know. And this is something on paper you'd have to redraw the whole image. But in Photoshop, you can just kind of manipulate different sections, especially if you put them all in different layers. You know, like the background elements are on a different layer, the mid-ground elements are on a different layer, and the foreground elements, which are the two characters, and the tree branch, and uh, possibly the things they're standing on, are on a, on a different layer. Now I'm adding in better versions of characters here, and trying to get them right. You know, if I'm having trouble figuring out where the characters go, I will, uh, you know, just move on to another stage. So here I move on to, like, figuring out where the word balloons are going to go, and just making sure I have enough room for the word balloons without making the whole image look claustrophobic. Because a lot of times, like especially when I first started doing comics, I wouldn't think about word balloon placement and then you end up like having to stuff it in the corner and crowding all the words and everything. And, and really one of the things I've learned over you know the 20 or so years I've been drawing comics is that you can never give things too much space. You know, like you just want, you want to give the words breathing room, you want to give the characters breathing rooms, you want to give the focus of the composition like this composition. It's all about pointing out the car in the distance. So if it's in the distance, you can keep making it smaller, keep making the car smaller, and that'll be cool. And here I decided to make this tree branch a tree that's almost tipping over, just because it's more interesting that way. So this whole comic is called After the Big One. The longer I'm in California, the more I think, oh, well, uh, eventually there's going to be a huge earthquake. <laughs> and I wonder when that's going to happen. Is that going to happen before I, I leave this town? Probably. So think about what might happen after a big earthquake or some sort of, you know, this comic takes place after some sort of catastrophe. I don't know whether it's local or global, but basically society's collapsed and all these kids are just kind of like roaming around foreign packs and uh, just being kids and being little animals and uh, just kind of having fun and kind of unaware of how kind of bleak the landscape they're living in is because that's all they've known. And yeah, so I, I want to do a comic about feral children in a bleak world, kind of living it up and kind of being, you know, kind of adaptable. You know, this isn't a new concept, but I think it's a fun idea for a comic strip. I kind of came up with the idea for it this one week. My water heater broke. It's not this strip, but there's another strip I sketched out where I, I didn't have hot water, so I would do jumping jacks before I went in the shower just so I could deal with the cool water. And so I've, there's a comic I want to do of this guy doing this exercise regimen. And this kid starts doing it with him. And at the end, the kid asks, oh, wow. You exercise and get in shape, and he's like, oh no, I'm just getting ready to take a shower. You know, not a great joke, but I like it. Anyway, that's kind of where I came up with the idea for this. Uh, what if we didn't have power or energy or hot water? We'd have to do workarounds, you know? And um, this is kind of comic about workarounds in an unpleasant time, I guess. For things further away, a lot of times I'll pick a smaller brush. So I think I made the brush a little smaller for these background trees than the foreground stuff. Using a smaller brush helps things recede into the background and not have enough importance. Even though the focus is this car, it doesn't need to be with a thick line just because it's all these little details. Things open up more if you use a thinner line. And you know, this is supposed to be a burnt forest, so I wanted to add more trees to it and kind of there's rubble in the background. And now I've got a, adding another layer 
So this is a car with uh, lots of broken glass. And I just want it to feel like it's been sitting there for a while. So I'm adding broken parts and leaves and rust to it uh, just to kind of age it. And then going back in and trying to get the characters to look right. So this character is supposed to be booping and beeping buttons on the dashboard, pretending they're spaceship buttons. And this panel is going to go across two different panels, so I'm, I'm trying to get interesting compositions that focus on each of the kids doing what they're doing. And in the second panel, there'll be a little surprise in the background, which is the joke. I mean, this comic is basically about two kids just playing. You know, there's no real punchline to it besides what's going on in the backseat of the car that the kids aren't really paying attention to. Uh, so I had to arrange the compositions so that what's happening in the backseat isn't revealed till the second panel. And then I had to arrange the text balloons so that they don't cover over what's happening in the last panel. And here I am, I'm thinking, oh, it's funner if this kid's standing on the seat instead of sitting creates a neater dynamic and more of a thrust to the button pushing. It seems more kid-like. And here we are. The surprise in the background is that there's skeletons in the back of the car of people kind of, I don't know, I like to imagine that this is the car from uh, the end of the movie, The Mist, I think, that Frank Darabont movie, where they all commit suicide in the back of the car. I'm not saying this takes place in Maine, but you know, it's like that type of scenario where the people just, they lose hope and they both have <laughs> uh, bullet holes in their heads. If you look closely, I mean, I, it's still sketchy right now, but when I get to the final inks, you'll see that, uh... Yeah, so this comic is pretty bleak, but I feel like it's also kind of optimistic because it's, you know, kind of about, you know, things move on and move forward no matter what happens, so... These kids aren't really affected by the bleakness of the world around them. They're just living in it. That's all they know. I kind of copied and pasted the kids from the first panel because I just wanted to make sure the kids stay on model. Here I am inking in the glass, and you can see I'm not really sticking to the lines for the most part of where I put them. A lot of times when I'm inking or doing another pass, I'll just change things and give things more room and organize things a little nicer on my second pass. It's kind of like the first pass is just a rough guideline. You don't have to like trace it, you know. In fact, a lot of times it's better if you don't trace it because when you redraw something as opposed to trace, in a way tracing you're flattening things out because you're just redoing the lines. But if you redraw it, then you're redoing the spatial analysis you're doing in your head, in your hand, while you're drawing. A lot of times when you redraw, you're fixing things too. I feel like it's always better to redraw than trace. Here I am, I just started a new layer. So I'm putting the stuff behind the kids on a different layer. And I think I'm inking with a slightly thinner line and just because it's in the background. Uh, and you know, I'm jumping from layer to layer. So now I'm back on the layer in the foreground and now I'm back on the layer in the background. You just try to jump around, adding in some springs to the seat that's fallen apart and uh, slowly moldering out in nature. Just kind of trying to make things look old. Like it's been there for a while and it's been abandoned for a while. Yeah, and a lot of times I'll finish off all the shapes so that, see how I'm drawing outside the panel? And that's just for coloring purposes. I'll, I'll get rid of that later, but when you close off shapes, it just makes it easier to select an area. And, you know, it's always fun to have a tree growing through a car, you know, because that's not supposed to happen. Yeah, I'm copying and pasting a uh, windshield wiper, but I decided this one's part of it is broken off, so I just copied and pasted the first part. Feral children should have missing teeth. Yeah, it just looks like they're having a good time. Getting close to being done inking. So now I just got to do the final surprise in the background, the skeletons. So you see, I just kind of rearrange them a little bit, have them more slumped over, like they've been sitting there for a long time. Add in spider webs and a tree and fill in the background. You know, then I'll create a new layer and I'll, again, I'll do what I did in the other panels where I'll work in a thinner brush and 
fill in all the backgrounds. I don't know how long it's been since this has actually happened, but in this area there's all these stoves and refrigerators covered in rubble, so maybe there were buildings here. Uh, people were living here and that all collapsed and then trees grew and then there was a forest fire. So these skeletons have probably been here for a very long time. But I, I guess skeletons probably are a normal part of these kids' lives, so they don't think nothing of it. They just see a cool car, old car that they can play around in and pretend it is a spaceship. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm kind of going through and figure out what layers I need, what layers I can merge together, and kind of rearranging the whole file and kind of condensing it a bit, uh, and then filling out gaps that need to be filled, you know, filling in trees or spaces that I forgot. And then I go through and I uh, kind of separate out the layers. So I'll select an area and then inverse the selection and then add in a layer of white beneath it so that you don't see through the characters. And I'll do that for everything. I'll do that for the panel borders. I'll do that for the mid ground and I'll do that for the foreground characters. Yeah, so that way, even though things are on different layers, it all feels like it's the same layer in Photoshop. And I think the final thing I do is I go through and I add in some blacks inside her mouth or you know, just to make some areas pop out more. Spot some blacks. And then that's it. This is the comic. These are the inks of the comic. I haven't done the lettering yet, but I'll probably save that till the end. And stay tuned uh, in an upcoming Drawing with Andy, I'll color in the strip. I've already filmed it, but I haven't edited it together. And so an upcoming episode of Drawing with Andy will be coloring in this comic and lettering it. Stay tuned for that. And thanks for joining me for this episode and hanging out and listening to me talk. And yeah, I hope you all have a good week. Thanks for watching.